everyone, welcome back to my page. This week I wanted to discuss social anxiety. Now there are different compartments to social anxiety and it can come across in different ways. But what I wanted to focus on this week is social anxiety and COVID. Because I feel like now that the mask mandate has been taken off and we have no restrictions anymore, a lot of people are feeling very anxious about getting back into public places and doing things that we considered very normal before the pandemic. Um, I will go more in, in detail about social anxiety as a whole because I've had some of you guys message me um, about this before, especially when it comes to public speaking or having social anxiety in the workplace. But at this week, we're going to concentrate on how, what it's like to get back into normality post the pandemic. So if you haven't been to my page before, welcome. I'm Hamasa. I look at mental and emotional well-being as well as day-to-day -day issues and just personal development. So please do subscribe to my page so that you're up to date with all my content. I, I just wanted to define the difference between anxiety and social anxiety because they're slightly different things. Anxiety as a whole is just thinking and overthinking and having negative thoughts and ruminating over imminent situations or just really feeling, um, anticipating what may or may not happen. But social anxiety is having that same feeling, but only at, in social situations where you're exposed to people and places that you're not very familiar with. Now, anxiety itself has three components. It has the posh words, like physiological, cognitive, and behavioral, or I'm gonna break them down, and is how you feel when you have anxiety, how you think, and how you behave. So the feeling, which is what most people notice first, is the physiological difference, is when you get the sick feeling, you know, you get that stomach pain and you feel lightheaded, you're shaking, you're going pale. All of those signs are what you feel in your body. The second thing would be the thoughts that come with it. So like you start feeling these things and then you start thinking that you're in trouble, you're going to die. Anyone who suffers from anxiety like myself, who has had a panic attack or an anxiety attack knows that feeling. So the thoughts that come to your head is like, oh my God, I'm going to die, or I'm in danger, I need to get away, I need to run. Um, this is what's going to happen, like worst possible case you're thinking about. And behavioral is what will then affect your behaviors because you're thinking and feeling the way you do, which is avoiding eye contact or speaking very fast or, you know, just stuttering your words. Those are the behavioral sides of anxiety. That's anxiety as a whole. Now, when you have social anxiety, you then feel these feelings and think these thoughts in social situations. And the difference between just feeling a little bit nervous about meeting new people or starting a new job and someone who suffers from social anxiety is that for people that don't have social anxiety, let's say you get that little tingly feeling and butterflies and nervousness before the first day of school. I had it when I was a kid, whenever it was summer holidays and we had to go back to school September time, I'd have that little like anxiety and it's like, oh my God, school, I'm nervous. Am I gonna make new friends? Am I gonna see my old friends? What's going on, what's happened? That's absolutely normal. Or the day that you go for your driving test and you feel really, really nervous about driving, but you pass your test and your confidence grows or when you start a new job. But people that have social anxiety, that feeling that other people get on just the first day, they have it continuously throughout their workplace or school life or when they're driving or whatever it is that they're doing that they have social anxiety towards. So public speaking, presenting, starting a new job, they constantly feel the feelings that other people feel just on the first day. And you can imagine that that's draining and it's, it just really could be debilitating.
Now linking this back to COVID, for the past two years, we've been told that people are bad. We need to keep our distance. We need to isolate. We need to be in a lockdown. People represent danger. They could make you sick. You need to wear a mask. You know, everybody has the luggies, social distancing, two meters apart, da da da. So of course, now that we're told, go out, there's no more mask mandate. You can do what you want. We want to get back to normality. A lot of people are finding it very hard to get back in the, the societal roles that we had before. And if people who don't suffer with social anxiety feel like this, then of course people that do suffer with social anxiety feel this 10 times as much and it's a lot more intensified for them. I was just talking to one of my friends on the phone and she was saying, and she is a total absolute social butterfly, has no issues meeting people, making friends, talking, nothing, super confident woman. She was speaking to me and she was saying that she recently took her daughter to soft play. In fact, she took her daughter to soft play yesterday. And she was saying that it was very strange for her to walk into a room and see all the parents without any masks and everybody's running around. And she said that she actually felt a little bit unsafe and a little bit anxious and worried and just didn't feel that comfortable being there in the first 10, 15 minutes because it was so weird and like such an unusual experience, especially for her little girl who's, only, who's now two and a half. So most of her life has been in lockdown. So even the baby's finding it weird to have so many kids in a playground and be able to socialize and hang out with them. So she was saying that, and I thought that a lot of people must be feeling the same thing. You know, we're told to go back to normality and we're not really given the tools to cope with that. And not all of us are may as resilient or are able to just get back into things and feel comfortable and safe. So there are certain things that we can do to get over this fear of post-COVID social anxiety. And people who generally suffer from social anxiety could benefit from these um, tips. And the first thing I'd say is for us to expose ourselves to what we're fearful of, because that's when we then face, you know, facing our fears. And if you feel uncomfortable going to public places without masks straight away, then it's best to just have gatherings with your own people and your own friends and family members so that you're more used to just being around a lot of people again. Exposing yourself and being in that environment but doing it safely around people that you trust and you feel comfortable with, it kind of takes away the fear of just being around bigger groups of people. So, try, you know, or try and do that, expose yourself somewhere that's outdoors. Like my friend who went to, I mean, soft play isn't outdoors, but I guess if you're going to the playground, then still, you still have a little, you know, fresh air and distance, but then you're around a lot more people and you can slowly start interacting with other parents and strangers as you would otherwise. Not that I'm promoting interacting with strangers, but I'm sure that you would make friends with people there. Um, so exposing yourself, I think, is a good way to try and get over that fear. The more you try and keep yourself inside, the more you, this fear will build up and you'll overthink it and you'll ruminate over it and you will just drive yourself crazy and be very, very, like, germophobic. The second thing would be to discuss it. Talk about your anxiety. Now, this might be more relevant to people who suffer from social anxiety generally, not necessarily about COVID, but it could also help you Talk it out with your friends or people that you feel comfortable talking about or if you're suffering from social anxiety and seeing a therapist and talk about it to your therapist and discuss the fears that you feel. So what is it that's making you feel so, self, not self-conscious, but so anxious towards the situation? Why, what would you think will happen? What's your worst fears? And the more you talk about it, the more you realize that with anxiety, they're just thoughts in our heads. They're not real. These are scenarios that we've built up. So discussing it, dissecting it, analyzing it, thinking of all the worst possible out outcomes and options and all the best ones, it kind of, when you get it out of your head and you speak it out or you write it out, you are then taking that weight off and realizing that a lot of it is things that you've made up. Especially if you're talking to someone that you trust or that knows you well and can give you like play the devil's advocate and give you like the flip side of the arguments like, yeah, but 
what if this happens? What if this goes wrong? They can tell you, well, what if it goes right? You know, it's 50-50. This is just your thinking. It would really help you put things into perspective and realize that a lot of it is just you making stuff up and self-sabotaging rather than the situation being as bad as you think it is. So speaking about this is important. I don't know how that could really relate to the COVID situation, but I guess it's the same thing. If you feel fearful of going to the playground and hanging out with other parents, then it's, you're better off speaking about this to a parent that you do trust or you do consider a friend and you guys could do your own thing and slowly like ease into it and consider and discuss your fears and things that you could do to avoid it and things that you could do to um, help you see things differently or just overcome that fear. So kind of applies to both, but probably more to people that have general social anxiety. And the last thing I'd say is to actually go out there and just jumping in the deep end. I know I said to expose yourself, but I said to expose yourself in your own safe environment, people that you feel comfortable in, but then maybe just take the plunge and it might help you. Some people find that like, it's like working well under pressure. Some people find it easier to just rip the bandaid and get it over and done with. So you will never know until you put yourself in the real world. And when it comes to social anxiety or public speaking and things like that is the same theory. If you're really, really fearful, you're going to have to sometime, at some point face that fear and just deal with it and overcome it. And once you deal with it and overcome it and realize that, you know what, it's not as bad as I thought it, it is and it's not, I, I didn't die from this, then you will slowly get used to it and practice makes perfect. For me, I mean, this isn't social anxiety, it's more like a fear slash phobia. I was very scared of horses, like incredibly scared of horses. And it actually affected a lot of my photo shoots because there was a lot of like bride and groom shoots and things that they needed a horse on. I, in fact, went all the way to Mauritius to shoot on the beach with a horse, riding this horse on a beach. And I was freaking out, crying that they had to like Photoshop the horse near me. I couldn't even be near it. And the horse could sense my fear and was going crazy. So just a mess like all the way in Mauritius, causing a scene, making a mess because I was so fearful of horses. Fast forward years later, I got asked to do another horse shoot. And because of my experience before, I was very honest with the client and I said, look, I have a fear of horses. I am like, you know, really, really scared of horses. Are you sure you want me for this job? And she was like, you know what, it's fine. We'll work it out on the day. I still want to book you. I said, okay, fine. I went down to the shoot beautiful big horse stallion came out but the calmest most gentle ho of horses and the trainer really like she stood with me she explained what I need to do how I need to control the horse horse reins and it just takes a little bit of like dominance over the horse and I'll be fine and I managed I just followed her instructions I trusted she the way she was speaking to me I trusted what she was saying. I, I just felt safe with her and I did that and I actually overcome my fear of horses. And I mean, I'm sure like I wouldn't choose to go horse riding now, but if I was ever to be in a position where there's a horse around, I wouldn't feel so scared of stroking it, touching its face or going near it as I was before because I just had to face it. I had no choice and I, it was my work that got put, I got put in a position where I had to see a horse again. And I had to just deal with it. And he actually, now I feel a lot more confident when it comes to horses. Totally random. Sorry if I went on a bit, but I just wanted to give you guys the example of sometimes it's just best to just go in in the deep end and dealing with it. And when it comes to COVID, you know, we have to get back to normality. At some point, our government is now saying, go ahead and do this. We've been fighting for our freedom. We've been wanting this. As long as we're safe, as long as we're taking care of ourselves and we're not being... Ir um, irresponsible with it, then we have to face our normality again. If you've enjoyed this, do share it with someone. Please subscribe, like and comment, and I'll see you guys here again next week. Thanks for watching. Mwah.